People's impression of the Burren is it's a magnificent landscape, wonderful scenery, but it is also a living landscape where farmers earn a living here. And the, uh, the, the strange thing about it is, and what's come out of the Burren Life Project, is that farmers earn a living here, and the better their farmers, the better it is for the environment. The environment gains. Sometimes when uh, you think about farming, you just think about food. And food, of course, is really important. And the stock produced by the farmers of the Burn is top quality, and it goes all over Europe. It's, it's, it's really good food. But what the farmers are producing, by virtue of the livestock grazing these hills, is probably the richest biodiversity in Northwest Europe. Because if you didn't have cattle here in wintertime, you wouldn't have the same biodiversity. When you stop grazing uh, land like this, what happens is one or two plants, which are very strong, they become dominant. So some grasses and heather start to become dominant and take over. And what they do is they form a thatch of, of grass and dead plant material through which the small burn flowers can't, can't emerge. What happens then is that um, shrub species like hazel and blackthorn, they start to come in. And over time, over a short enough period of time, you can go from a beautiful orchid-rich grassland to a very interesting and lovely um, scrub or piece of woodland. Uh, the problem is scrub and woodland isn't as threatened a habitat as these orchid rich grasslands. So without farming, most of the burn revert back to the woodland from whence it originally came 6,000 years ago before farmers arrived. I suppose most farmers in Ireland come the 1st of November would be putting their cattle into a shed and they would be feeding them silage. And I suppose the, what's different about the burn, as far as I'm aware, it's one of the very few places in the world where we put the cattle up the mountains for the winter. My lowland, my greenland is, 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 is giant to my winterage, to my upland, and I can walk the cattle up. Others are not that lucky. They have to put them in a truck and draw them there. For us as farmers, winterage is our silage field. It's where we put the cattle for the winter to feed them. And they have what we call a dry lie up here. They, the ground is dry, limestone is dry, it's porous, the water disappears into the ground. No matter how wet it is, there will never be floods of water or water logging up here. The porous limestone takes away all that water and goes down into the underground systems. So most farmers in the burn today, and we have maybe about 500 farm families uh, working and farming in this landscape, most of them keep what are called suckler cows, which are basically cows which have a calf every year. The calf is reared until about nine or ten months and then sold, um, and that's repeated year on year. So most farmers here will be small scale, maybe 30 or 40 animals would be fairly typical. And they use the barn then for what we call winter grazing or winterage. So every winter around now, um, the cattle go up onto the hills, they forage the rough grasslands, drink the calcium rich water and lie out in the uh, dry limestone and then are taken back off to winterages uh, in spring. So in April and May, when we have spring grass down the lowland fields, the cattle are moved back down. So that's how they really operate here. It's a livestock based system. It's all grass based as well. Uh, summertime in the lowlands, wintertime in the mountains, which is kind of weird when you think about it. It's different from most parts of Europe in that regard. We have the local music bands with their concerts uh, then we have the, the whole day the handcraft market and at about midday today the cows will come from the from the huts down to the valley and they walk here through the village <laughs> Uh, were a head decoration with mostly religious figures and uh, fresh flowers and also colorful bands. But if something happened on the hut during the summer, um, the cows uh, have a, only a black dye. If a cow was dead or a member of the family died during the summer, they only wear the black dye. Since we have farmers 
zebras in the Duro. Um, there are also huts in the mountains, up in the mountains, where the farmers bring their cows during the summer time because of the fresh grass. And they stay there for the whole summer. Um, the farmers go up about in June, uh, when the snow is away from the mountains and they stay there the whole summer and um, we all um, take part and celebrate that the farmers come back to the valley. Normally, right in Alpachtal has about 2,500 inhabitants, and today, yeah, I think we are about 7,000 people who visit the Almatrik, and um, they come from everywhere, from many people from fr uh, France, but also German and from Netherlands. We also have American people here, and yeah, from all over the world. Well, there's a practice known as transhumance, which basically accounts for the movement of, of livestock and, and their owners uh, uh, to avail of seasonal grazing. And obviously in most parts of Europe, uh, there's amazing cañadas or cattle routes uh, via which cattle were brought onto the hills, usually in summertime when the hills were le less cold and there's better growth on them. But in the burn, we kind of do the opposite. Uh, we take the cattle to the hills in wintertime and the reason why we think that practice, that kind of reverse transhumanist practice developed here is because probably of the lack of water here in summertime. During the Winter's Festival every year, we, we try, to, try to celebrate this really important tradition and thank farmers for their contribution, uh, I guess, uh, uh, to, to society, uh, managing this wonderful landscape. And we do it in a very authentic way uh, by um, reenacting a cattle drove. So we have a farmer, uh, Timmy Lanan is here, uh, who's farming on Abbey Hill. So Timmy's going to take his herd from New Quay and across an old green road onto uh, the edges of Abbey Hill, where the cattle will spend the winter time. So the lovely thing about this is the farmer invites the broader community, local and visiting community, to join them on the cattle drove and share some stories about farming. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank on your behalf the Lenan family for making the cattle available and uh, allowing us to help them to do what 700 odd farmers will do this month, put the cattle out onto the, onto the mountain. So it's a very old tradition and it's amazing to think that you're walking your walk, that cattle walked 5,000 years ago up onto a winter and that the same thing has happened every year since. <laughs> we celebrate the Winter's Festival every year around uh, Halloween or as, as it was uh, and still is known, uh, Samhain and that is very much uh, an inflection point I guess in the farming year. It's when you know the summer uh, uh, pastures had been grazed and the winter fodder had been saved when the cattle were starting, the cows were starting to go dry so farmers are starting to prepare for the winter ahead and for us it's a way of telling the world like these traditions are still out there but we need to cherish and value them and we need to hang on to them because what they deliver in terms of our culture is so so important. <laughs>